hello guys welcome to today's tutorial where we shall be starting straight from where we left the other time by building the dairy models and today there are several models including the insemination the inseminator the symptoms the disease the treatment and so on models so i'll start straight with the insemination related models and in the interest of time i'll be just repopulating the the data or the the model code and then explaining them line by line And so we shall be starting the inseminator model. The inseminator model stores the information about the inseminators in our farm. It has the class meta that this specifies the name that will be visible in the admin or elsewhere. And it has some Unicode character. Maybe you might be wondering what this means. This is just a calendar image that will be next to this AI technician, at least to give this a little bit more of visibility and interactivity kind of. It has several fields that captures data about the inseminator in our farm. This includes the name, the company where the inseminator come from, the license number, the phone number, the email, the address, and some notes. And now moving on to the semen model. The semen model has several fields too. The inseminator field, this ensures that each and every semen record in our database is linked to a specific inseminator that used it. This is the producer. For now, I have a choice field of these two producers from where I come from. This could vary based on where you are and the semen producers in your country. The semen batch, this could be redundant for some people, but I just added it there. Maybe sometimes it might not work. Then there is the date of production and the date of expiry. All these are subject to validation. For example, the date of production cannot be in future. And the date of expiry must be in future. There is this notes field. This is not required, as sometimes it could be blank. And then there is the insemination model. This model represents the actual record of the insemination event for a cow in our farm. It also has the meta class that specifies the verbose name in our admin or elsewhere. It has several fields, the date of insemination. That's subject to some validations. Of course, it cannot be in future. Then this is the cow linked to the insemination which means that for every specific insemination, it has to be linked to a specific cow. And then there is the pregnancy field with the editable is equal to false. This means that this will not be entered manually as it will be done automatically by these insemination events. There's a success field, which is a Boolean field that will be indicating either true or false to indicate whether an insemination is successful or not. There's the notes field and then there's the inseminator, which is linked to this specific insemination event. Then there's the semen that was used for this insemination event. And then we have this property, the since lactation, that will be used in conjunction with the heat model. This ensures that the farmer can view the number of days that has elapsed since the last lactation. And this will show the farmer whether the cow got pregnant or not. Because assuming that the days has elapsed, probably maybe there's 30 days and the cow has not shown any heat signs, that will automatically tell the farmer that the cow is probably pregnant and then we have some several validation checks in this clean method first of all we check when the cow is dead of course it cannot be inseminated and the cow is already pregnant and then also we check if there are available heat records for the cow to be inseminated because it does not make sense to inseminate a cow who is not in heat then and then in our database, we'll only allow cows who are around a year to be inseminated. If, it, if the age is less than that, then it will throw this error. The cow must be at least 12 months old to be inseminated. Actually, this makes sense because most of the cows that we do have mature from one year old onwards. And finally, we ensure that each and every insemination records are separated by a minimum of 21 days. This makes sense because most of the cows are on heat on an average of 21 days, between 18 to 24 days. So 21 days makes sense. So if a cow is on heat, then it will be inseminated. Then after being inseminated, it will now wait for another 21 days. That is if the insemination failed. So if any insemination records need to be added for that specific cow within less than 21 days, then it will throw this error. The cow cannot be inseminated within 21 days of previous insemination. Moving on to the culling model, the culling model has several fields such as the cow, the reason for culling, 
the date of calling and the notes if available. The reason of calling could be due to medical reasons, financial reasons, environmental reasons, legal reasons, or the genetic reasons. For example, a cow could be terminally injured and that could be a valid reason for calling. The cow could maybe showing some unwanted inherited diseases. There could be low production. There could be government regulation and so on. The calling model has a meta class that also specifies the, the verbose name, the name that will be visible to the admin or elsewhere where this calling model is accessed. And now, with all that done, we'll proceed to other models, the disease model, the treatment model, the symptom models, and so on. And so, I'll start from the pathogen model. This model is used to represent the different types of pathogen that can cause diseases in animals. It has a name field that is set to a character field of a maximum of 50 characters. The name field is choices field, which means that it can only be set to one of the three options, either the virus, the bacteria, or the fungi. And additionally, the name field is said to be unique, this one here, meaning that no two pathogens can have the same name. The max length 50 looks quite long for the virus, either the bacteria or the fungi, but maybe there could be other pathogens with a longer name, so that's why I just decided to let it at 50. Proceeding to the disease category model, this model is used to represent different categories of diseases that an animal can experience in a farm. Diseases could be classified under nutritional diseases, genetic diseases, infectious diseases, or the physiological diseases. And now, we move to the symptoms model, which is an essential part of tracking diseases in animals. It includes fields such as the name, the type, the description, the date of serve, the severity, and the location. One of the key features of this model is the ability to specify the type of the symptom, which can be helpful in identifying diseases based on the symptoms. The severity and the location fields also allow for more specific tracking of symptoms and their, and their impact on the animal's health. This model includes a number of choices for the symptom type, the severity, and the location, which helps to standardize the data and make it easier to analyze. It also includes a validator that ensures that the date observed is not in the future. And now, trickling down to the treatment model, which represents the treatment given to a cow for a specific disease or diseases, the model has several fields, including the cow, the date of treatment, the treatment method, the duration of treatment, not if available, and the treatment status. All this here. The treatment model has several validation checks, one of them being the cost of treatment has to be greater than zero, the duration of treatment has to be greater than zero, the date of treatment cannot be in the future, if the tr treatment status is completed, the duration has to be provided. It makes sense that after treatment is completed, you have to specify how long did it take to treat that specific animal or that specific cow. If the treatment is cancelled, notes has to be provided for the reason why the treatment is cancelled, similar to whenever treatment status is postponed. If the cow is dead, then you cannot treat a dead cow. If the cow is already sold, the cow is unavailable and cannot be treated. And finally, a treatment method has to be provided because it makes logical sense that for a treatment record to be saved, the method of that treatment has to be provided. And finally, we shall tackle the disease model. The disease model represents a disease or a condition that has affected a cow or a group of cows in our dairy farm. This model has several fields. The name field stores the name of the disease or condition and it's unique. The pathogen field is a foreign key to the pathogen model and it stores the causative agent of the disease, which could be virus, fungi, or bacteria. The category field is also a foreign key to the disease category model and it stores the category of the disease. This could be nutritional, infectious, physiological, or genetic as we had described earlier in the models. The occurrence date field stores the date when the disease occurred oil is the recovered field is a boolean field that indicates whether the disease is recovered or not the recovered date field stores the date when the disease was recovered and the notes field is for additional information about the disease the cows field is a many-to-many -many field that stores the cows affected by the disease 
And the symptoms field is also a many-to-many -many field that stores the symptoms associated with the disease. Lastly, the treatments field is also a many-to-many -many field that stores the treatment given to the cow for the disease. This many-to-many -many field means that many cows can have a single disease and a single disease can also be associated with a single cow. I hope you understand that better. This model allows us several checks or several validation checks. If the cow is marked as recovered and there is no recovery date, it will raise this error. And if the recovery date is provided but the cow is not yet marked as recovered, it will raise this error. If the occurrence date of the disease is greater than the recovery date, it does not make any sense because recovery has to be in the future. So if this is violated, it will raise this error. If the date that is keyed in is in the future, it will raise this error. If there is no name for the disease, it will yell at you, the disease name is required. And if there is no pathogen for each and every disease, there has to be a pathogen. And finally, if the disease is marked as recovered and there is no treatment, then it will raise this error. It makes sense that for every recovery, there has to be a treatment. And by the way, with this check, this check is not comprehensive in this sense. Sometimes the cow might just be injured and actually there's also a disease and there's no pathogen. So in future, I'll look into how to refactor this. And now we shall go back to the insemination model. This one here. We would want that for any successful insemination, this ensures that a pregnancy is created automatically on the fly. And that's the reason why this pregnancy field here is not editable, meaning that it's not manually entered by the user or the farmer or the manager. This makes sense because we have this success field that if it is flagged as true, then it will ensure that the pregnancy record is automatically initiated in itself. And so, to link these two models, the pregnancy and the insemination model, we'll use the Chango signals. Let's name the signal create pregnancy from a successful insemination. So this is how it works. If the insemination is marked as successful and there's no pregnancy related to that insemination, it will go ahead and create a new pregnancy record and then assign that pregnancy to this specific insemination and then save it. With all that done, we shall proceed to the admin site. Peter Evans and boom we have all those new models that we added today the AI records the AI technicians and uh, so these are the Unicode characters let me show you for example the milk model the Unicode character U 0001 F 95 B stands for the milk in the glass this one here if you want to learn more about the unicode characters you can just google them or go to this website thecompa.com and you'll get them there are several unicode characters for example this no entry unicode characters the u triple zero two six d4 and many more in the interest of time i'll only test the two models the insemination model and the pregnancy model so i'll go ahead and add a new record and just before i add let's first of all cross check if there's a pregnancy record actually there's none so go ahead and add a new insemination record so this cow was inseminated today it's a fast cow and the insemination was successful i know this doesn't make sense but this is just an ad hoc test to confirm whether a successful insemination record creates a pregnancy record too alongside so the cow must be in heat throwing this error oh actually it makes sense by the way for you to inseminate a cow there has to be a heat record so let's go ahead and add a new heat record for this specific cow today now then the, this is the first cow save it come back to the ai record date of insemination is today the cow is the first cow it's more successful then save it boom actually you can see there is this tick, this is a boolean flag that shows that this insemination was successful. Then because I've just added this today, of course, the distance insemination has to show zero. This is the first cow, the inseminator, because we did not key it in, it's none. So that makes uh, sense. So let's go and check the pregnancy record. We have a pregnancy record created by the fact that the insemination record was confirmed as successful on March 1st, which is today that I'm recording this video. So the start date of the pregnancy makes sense that it starts on that very 
1st March 2023 and the due date is November 2026. And so this is how this works. Regardless of the days since insemination, because actually in the real life situation, the days since insemination will be around maybe 20 something days for this success to be confirmed because you can only confirm if an insemination is successful when the cow doesn't subsequently come into heat so it doesn't matter because the date of insemination was already logged so it will only take that and assign that as the start date of the pregnancy and with that done it's necessary to say that in the next few tutorials i'll be doing the views and the templates and if there are other models that I'm supposed to add. I'll be just doing them under the hood and I'll also be adding the logic while I do the tutorials for the views. So in the process of building the views and the templates, we shall be having something like this. We shall be having our cows listed beautifully in our website or our farm website. We will be able to add a new cow with the modern day web interactivity. New cow. Breed is a crossbreed. Maybe it was born today. This is a mail. Save it. Refresh. Then we have the two cows listed. And we'll also be able to update it. So we we'll just give it maybe new cow. Updated. So if we refresh it, as you can see, we shall have that. And so that's it for this tutorial. I hope that we are technically done with the models, but I'll be adding some more. So in the next series, we shall be building something like this, the views and everything. So thank you for watching up to this end and subscribe, like, share.